for joining us again. This is the last panel of, uh, of, our, um, of the day, and I would say that probably, I mean, one of the m most interesting panels of the day in terms of uh, it takes us to the, to the future of the PPP. Um, we have uh, speakers for some of the um, potential projects of phase two, so those ones, those proposals that are now in negotiation, but they, they will give us some, some interesting information. And we also will uh, we'll have some information also about the phase three. We got quite a lot of information from Peter Fatelnik yesterday about phase three, but we think it's good to also uh, um, end the day with, with that kind of information. <coughs> so we have today from FICON 10 2, we have two people, uh, Mr. Uh, George Wright, uh, head of the Internet Research and Future, uh, Future Services team at the BBC, and then Ms. Carmen McWilliams from uh, uh, Grassroots Arts and Research. And they will talk about fee content too. I think um, uh, uh, George is going to give us an idea of, of the objectives of the project, and then Carmen will focus more on the uh, engagement of user communities. Okay. So, who wants to start? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, I have some slides here, but I don't know about you, my eyes are burnt by slides on screen recently, so I'm going to talk through them, and if people want to get them, then I can make them available on one of the project websites. So, as mentioned, um, I'm part of FI Content 2, um, which aims to build on the work that we've done so far in FI Content 1, and sort of prepare the way to Phase 3. And um, we have a series of uh, work packages within the uh, FI content project uh, cut around platforms. But the thing that we're going to talk to you today a little bit is about one of the work packages which aims to kind of get the dissemination and get the results of the work out there to SMEs uh, to build on some of the experience that the, um, the partners have in this area um, and then talk a little bit about the uh, user communities. Carmen's going to talk about the user communities and how we're going to get those involved. So really, I think, for us, the aims are to work with 18 partners across Europe, backed by major industrial actors from media and content area, uh, along with academic and other research organizations. Um, we want to build on the supply chain knowledge that some of our broadcasters and industrial partners have already. It is not new for the BBC to work with SMEs. Right from the beginning, when the BBC was created from uh, an organisation of eight different, what we would now call SMEs, to create the British Broadcasting Corporation, we've worked with startups and private sector. Over the last 20 years, the BBC has worked with um, a, a series of groundbreaking initiatives, opening up APIs, opening up content areas, and so on to, to startups. The BBC, the BBC spends £1.5 billion, pounds. at the moment that's about €1.5 billion, because of the way the exchange is, a year on, 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 on content. And um, of that, we have to spend 25% with um, independent companies. We have to, and we consistently exceed that. So we spend about 38% of our content budget with the independent sector. Um, so that is primarily in the UK. But as part of European research, we've consistently worked with SMEs to deliver the work that we do, whether that's set-up box manufacturers, whether that's standards bodies, whether that's startups. So recently, the BBC has been taking part in initiatives called Connected Studio, which aims to spend between one and five million pounds a year just on SMEs, on companies with less between uh, three and ten individuals. Um, so how are we going to do this experience, an experience that other partners on this share, so IRT, uh, the German research organization, consistently works with SMEs as well. How are we going to do that and aim to get the results of this in front of SMEs? The first thing is that we are going to actively target non-EU events. So we, as broadcasters, we go to domain-specific events. Uh, the IBC, the International Broadcasting Convention in Amsterdam, um, uh, CES. These are places that Companies go to as a matter of course, but they don't necessarily come to EU events. This is the first, trying to do something like this. We want this to be the first of many. So the second way that we're going to do it is by constantly releasing our work in the open. So we've been doing this so far, and a number of work as part of Phase 1 has been released as either as open source or through standards bodies. 
because this is important, because it's, we see that as part of our role is to translate some of the um, stuff, the EU stuff, into things that SMEs can, can, can work with. We will also, as part of the uh, FIPPP program as a whole, be feeding into, through the experimentation sites and methodologies, through the capacity building and infrastructure and through fireware, we will be constantly iterating on the stuff that we're doing. We have explicitly, in our proposal, explicitly said we think there will be gaps between what we produce and what the community needs. So we've said this, and this is quite a hard thing to get across, because in effect we're saying we won't deliver everything. But we know we won't, and so we've explicitly left spaces where people, users or SMEs or startups say, oh, your work on this platform, this doesn't deliver the streaming latency that we need, and we are an SME and we think we can supply that to you. And so we will constantly iterate and return from, from, from going to events and from dissemination, <coughs> we will return specific requests or specific um, identified standards which are needed, and we will return those to our work. So that's the approach we're taking. It's an open ethos. It's one that we think fits with the whole of the PPP, but it's also identifying specifics in our areas of domain knowledge. But that's one of the benefits about being a content project is that content can sometimes come from one person in a bedroom, whereas for a power project, uh, it's quite unlikely that someone's going to do that. You know, our industry relies on startups and SMEs, and we hope that with this project we will engage with them. And our aims are fairly bold. We want to get to, we want 100, we want 200 SMEs involved. But in order to get there, we have to start with 1, 2, 3, 5, 10. So that's how we're going to do it. So Carmen's going to talk a little bit now about engaging with the user community and feeding back results from the test labs and so on. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't think I shall talk like this again. I, I think I shall show something because you are so good in English, but I'm... Let me just... I change a little bit. Medium. just because I think it's good to um, show it a little bit more graphical. And I will go there. Zack. And I'm going where I want to go. I want to go here. So, thanks. So, I'm just basically, I'm Carmen McWilliams. I'm from Grassroot Arts. And as the name maybe already suggests, I'm an SME. I'm not only um, some kind of SME, I'm a very tiny SME, a micro SME. And I'm the director of this micro SME, and I have the pleasure to be in this FI content next to BBC. But as you can imagine again, I will now not talk from the industrial point of view, I will talk from the SME point of view. And I'm happy that I'm leading in this FI content project phase two, the experimentation sites. And it's also about user community activation. So the question is really how you get these SMEs which are not sitting in this room. <laughs> They're not sitting here. Um, how do we really get them for phase three involved? And it's more really practical bottom-up question. Because I think there are many, many would be interested to collaborate with us, but they won't hear about us. So what we did already in phase one was uh, that we said we have to activate in the regional local areas where our partners are, we have to activate focus groups. So already two years ago, we started to activate interested organizations, SMEs, but also universities, schools, even individuals like teachers, professors, city administrative people, they built focus groups. Focus groups are just citizens who are interested in the future internet, in the use of media. And we kept repeating the slogan as a reminder, FIPPP is led by industry and driven by users. So it's really driven by users and the experiments we are gonna do in phase two are created by users and now, as in phase two, we already can build on these focus groups, on all these activities, and basically connect these different focus groups, and already there we have a user community. 
Very practical. I'm just talking very practical because that's how we started. We took different organizations in different cities, brought them together in a room and called them focus group and said, what would you like, for example, to do in Cologne in phase two? And now we are coming, phase two going towards phase three. Now we just in these different experimentation sites. We have six in this project, which is Cologne, Zurich, Barcelona, Berlin. Uh, uh, Berlin, Cologne, Zurich. Now we have it. Cologne, Zurich, Berlin. So, Barcelona, Brittany, and I forgot. Lancaster. <laughs> This is too difficult for me. So anyway, but we're connecting them, and here we have already have a starting user community, and these people are talking to each other in the city, in their region, and it's growing constantly. It's no magic behind it. If you start with a small group, they talk to each other, they connect other people to it, and more and more already in these different cities and regions, we have SMEs interested in what we are doing and they will have the possibility to have hands-on experience on the platforms which we are building. So, and we're not only having these focus groups, but we also have now a user advisory board, which is our own invention. This user advisory board is protecting the rights of these focus groups people and on these test users and end users and also SMEs who want to participate they basically look over their legal and ethical rights, so we're not abusing them in experiments, etc. We have the support of the local public authorities, like the cities themselves. They signed and said they're very interested in our experiments. And we have an external ethical advisor and who runs around and sees if we are doing the things okay. And just an example, get a feeling these are just normal citizens meeting where they discuss what kind of experiments I want to do. These are expert adults, and they are just students, young people, so it's basically open to anybody. And the motto was behind, why don't we give these young people also a voice, because they're going to be the future. If we don't allow them to participate in this future media internet, we have no future. We have to skill them, we have to give them access to the technologies, so it's basically how we can even allow a person who's yet maybe not an SME to become an SME. How can he be a game developer in the future? How can he make money? How we give access, open access. Can only repeat, open access. And this is the last slide for me. Concretely means, like in phase two, we are offering, as George already said, an open call for new SMEs to join us, to use our platforms, which are gaming platform, mobile platform, TV platform. Uh, but also we just ask young people who are not SMEs, because it makes no sense to only ask SMEs to join, just anybody, they can join our open source community platform, which we are publishing very soon, as soon as the project starts. It's free, it's open, and anybody can join means joining the experiments, joining, getting access to, the, uh, to basically our services, our applications. This is all phase two, and this open source community platform will grow. There will be more and more interested people shaking what we are doing. And of course, going towards phase three, calls for SMEs, as you already heard about the last two days. It's basically, it's, there you can really go and try to make business services on top of our platforms. But you have to win the call. So this is here. Okay, this was very practical what I just said, but the point is this is the only way I see that we attract people which don't yet ever heard about us. We have to allow people in different cities just to join us. Okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much to George Sam and Carmen. Really very good messages. Obviously, the focus in, in engaging SMEs and, uh, and also the focus on users. 
I, I like very much the fact of the, of the ethical concerns and, uh, and the, the, the focus also on the young people that are, indeed they are the future and we are talking about the future internet. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Alexander from uh, Finesque. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you for <laughs> uh, correcting me. Yeah, he's going to give us the insight of uh, the, the project objectives and also the opportunities and uh, the plans for engaging SMS <laughs> in the future. Thank you. Can I help you with that presentation? I don't know. I need some. If you get the uh, screen running. <laughs> Shutting down, that was the wrong one. Okay. Yeah, we just need to. Okay. Okay, just briefly that we can start. My name is Alexander von Jakwitz, um, mom group. Uh, I'm part of the PNAC pro uh, project. Um, our project leader, Fiona, said maybe I talk because I come from an SME and this is the SME forum. Uh, this was just a joke. And um, <laughs> um, yes, what we are going to talk about is. Uh, I'll give you a brief introduction again about what the project is about because uh, we obviously have uh, quite a revolution in the, in the energy system ahead of us. And the other thing is what we thought is, ab is about um, how can we actually uh, integrate innovative people. And so we created our own work package for that and I want to show you what uh, the ideas were that we came up with. Okay. It's, um, it's still working? Okay. It's coming. Welcome. Good. Okay. So good. Um, energy market. <clears throat> I think we have two. We have two big uh, developments that we face that might be interested for the future. Uh, one thing is, uh, as you have said before, we have uh, more generators that are volatile. Volatile means the feeding in of energy is not uh, as great as we are we were used to, uh, but we have uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, frequency changes in it. So that means uh, we have, on the other side, consumers who have to react on that somehow. This could be done by uh, <coughs> electric vehicles, it could be done by households, by, by, by industry, whatever. But uh, what changes is that uh, the individual consumer is more in the focus. This is the one side. On the other side, on the supply side, we have um, a lot of little devices, so to speak. We have the solar panels on the roofs, we have uh, wind turbines, and this is a totally different landscape than what we are used to with these big uh, power plants. So what we hear uh, already is we get more people involved, and more people involved means we need, if we need um, devices, we need communication devices to actually can involve a lot of people, and this is our chance we see for the future internet. Okay. Yeah, it's coming now. It's coming? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I think now I need my slides. Yeah. Okay, Perfect. here we come. Perfect timing. Good. Just. I hope I don't shut it down again. Okay. So this is the consortium. Just briefly, <coughs> all around Europe, uh, we take care of these issues. But this is the central slide I wanted to show you. Um, and this is uh, very much uh, seen from a business perspective, not so much technical. Because when I talk to people about business opportunities around this, uh, and I try to explain what a generic enabler is and a domain-specific enabler and what the requirements are, uh, I see this little tiredness getting in their eyes. So I try to find something more simple. Uh, and for most business people, uh, what future internet is just a black box. It's a black box uh, that should work. It should reduce costs. It should be uh, broadly available. All the things, all the benefits we already know from, from, from Internet. And uh, the most important part of this slide is this uh, dark blue line, is this API li layer that we heard about uh, from before, which means it's the connection for, uh, for de developers to get access to what we have built in our black box. So... Um, in Finzene, in, in the project before where we were also involved, we have collected a lot of use cases, um, uh, so what's, what's actually possible on this platform. But they, most of them were technically um, initiated. And what's really lacking, what we found, uh, are, are business models. How can make people money out of it? Who will be these people in future, and what shall they do? And um, since... Uh, 
we got a little bit at an end with our own ideas. We, we said, okay, we need to find people who think from a totally different perspective. And we think uh, these people uh, we get from, from, from all the SMEs who are anyway interested in innovation. Uh, and the other thing, uh, the other group of people we target are students. So this is the model we have. We have on, on the left side, you see the trial sites. What we identified out of, out of Finsene, what's worth actually uh, putting into a pilot, uh, developing, checking out the generic enablers and all the stuff that all other projects also do. On the, on the other thing, um, we will um, provide venture capital events. Um, means we go together with uh, venture capital uh, companies and providing an event uh, with, with, with this issue of smart energy and future, and future internet. Because uh, uh, we think that uh, we, we need this kind of support that, that really SMEs are coming because there's big money at the table, usually. I don't know if someone here was already in one of these events. It's really serious. People have a couple of minutes' time to present their ideas, and if they succeed, uh, they can go home maybe with a million uh, of euros for a new idea. I mean, that's the best case. We don't offer so much from our project, but, we, but what we offer is uh, studies for um, business cases we think uh, are valuable for what we want to provide. And um, these, these uh, studies uh, we, will, um, we will offer in the, in, the, in, the, in the open calls. So this will be a combination of these events and the open calls. So this is one way how we want to do it. And uh, these studies are actually made that people can develop their ideas with these trial sites. And the other idea is a student contest. Uh, one of our partners, the uh, University of Aachen, uh, has done this before a lot of times uh, and said the, 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 the results they get are remarkable. Um, to give you an example, the last uh, contest they did was about logistics on an airport. It was done by Lufthansa. Lufthansa said, okay, we wanna have a solution how to actually move around uh, work tools in an airport. And the, winners, and the winner, the student group that won, said, why not using the luggage belts? So they used the luggage belts. They had, it was not much of an investment that needs to be done to get that moving. But here you can see where people come from a different angle, they see something where uh, others are, who are usually in this, uh, working in this field are blind for. And this is what we hope for and expect. Uh, the good thing is, uh, not only the winners win in this, in, this, uh, in this context, also the losers win because everyone who, who, who comes up with an idea, we, co we collect in our finance innovation community, um, which will uh, be supported by, uh, uh, by Facebook size on the internet and so on, so that we really uh, have a, um, built a strong community. And this will be our preparation for the phase three. This will be our, how to say it, um, reserve that we can use for uh, the phase three proposals. So, so what we expect from the project as a wrap up is um, uh, to get this API running. That's the first thing. The second thing is um, to give a push, an innovation push with, with our efforts. Um, we expect um, results, of course, from the trials that can be used uh, for a larger community. Um, we hope of, com of, a, of a soon commercialization, commercial to get co a commercial that people earn money with it. Um, some, da -da -da yeah, of course, we are depending on fiber, that's clear, but we are, we are in discussion. And of course, that we get some spin-offs for the phase three from, uh, from our current project. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Alexander. Really, we can see a lot of creativity here in uh, the way you plan to, to engage uh, uh, SMEs and users for the second phase. And also I have to say that uh, students, young people, they appear again. So I think it's, it seems to be quite a good thing we are going to find in phase, two, in phase two. So now uh, we have representing the CS Space project, uh, Halut Gordman. CS Space, as it was mentioned yesterday, is the marriage of two phase one projects, Small Agri-Food and um, Finest. And um, let's see what uh, they, they plan for SME engagement.
sorry for that. <laughs> okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Haluk Gökman. Yesterday I have presented Finest Project, and today uh, I will be presenting uh, potential uh, Project C space. But keep in mind that uh, all could uh, all my sayings are subject to the successful completion of the sea space negotiations. Otherwise, it would be nothing. So, um, uh, motivation actually, I have presented yesterday the uh, transport and logistics sector, 7% of uh, European GDP, and 5% employment. And smart agri-food is also a more or less similar figure, so uh, we have enough motivation to this project. And I'm just going to concentrate on uh, mainly uh, what we are going to do and how uh, the further stakeholders or users or communities can participate. We will be showing our use cases coming from uh, Smart Agri-Food and c uh, Finest project under three uh, umbrellas. Crop protection information sharing and the uh, greenhouse management control under the farming in the cloud. And intelligent perishable goods logistics will be shown with fish distribution, planning and replanning from Norway to uh, Brazil, for example, and fresh fruit and vegetable quality assurance, as well as flowers and plant supply chain monitoring. And we have the third one, smart distribution and consumption. This will contain meat information, actually uh, very, let's say, uh, current uh, with the horse meat uh, stuff, very important issue. An import and export of consumer goods and tailored information for consumers. So um, the uh, trial experimentation sites, uh, if you look at the sites, the uh, Norway, Netherlands, Germany, Spain, Turkey and Greece, and these are distributed. Those eight uh, trials will be distributed among these countries. And uh, if you look at the phases, uh, what we have actually in the phase one, as I have outlined yesterday, we have just uh, defined our requirements and specifications uh, for the second phase. But at the same time, we have shown some, uh, we have implemented some mock-ups, okay, for the first phase, and. But the main thing is uh, the second phase. This is the implementation phase. We will be implementing, as I have said, those eight uh, experimentation uh, or domain-specific applications, as well as the uh, some baseline applications uh, under C-Space uh, umbrella. And then uh, we will be uh, making also a uh, call for further implementation because uh, we are unable to implement all, let's say, targeted uh, applications. There will be, I think, 1.3 or 1.4 million uh, budget for further uh, application implementation, including baseline as well as some uh, domain-specific applications. And then uh, the phase three is the... Uh, let's say the pre-product implementation, what we, we are going to test in the second phase, okay? Implement, show, and uh, this uh, component of five-way components will be tested, and also our platform and applications will be tested. Afterwards, then it will be ready for uh, further implementation and uh, industrial commercialization. And then uh, the overall vision, if you look at uh, the uh, picture, from the left-hand side, we will have base technologies, which is coming from uh, fiber uh, components. We are changing terminology, so always, uh, I was just going to say core platform, or, you know, always changing. But anyway, this is fiber components will be used. Uh, and then we will be implementing our uh, platform on top of this. But this platform then will be used by, if you see, production, manufacturing, transport, logistics, wholesale, retail, service sector, any other sectors available using services in their business uh, could be used. At the same time, this platform is open for further implementation and applications from ICT industry, value-added service providers, or cloud uh, operators, infrastructure providers, as well as software solution providers could benefit from this platform. It will be like App Store or, you know, uh, open future internet platform, okay, uh, providing possibilities to any sector, uh, bringing new applications. And the, uh, on below, if you look at, uh, we will be having our interfaces to the legacy systems or uh, 
Internet of Things, anything I mean available now could be also easily integrated into the, this platform. So um, the current situation, I don't want to talk in detail, but I would like to show uh, the targeted one with uh, our core, let's say, four modules which will be implemented in the uh, C-Space platform. One of them is end-to-end -end visibility uh, uh, application. Other one is e-marketplace, monitoring and tracking, and transportation planning. This would be the, let's say, four core uh, implemented by the consortium, but there would be further, let's say, baseline applications foreseen, but this would be, I think, announced in the open call. This will be implemented by third parties with the open call. And this could be also extended in the phase three with the uh, new uh, domain-specific baseline or domain-specific applications. And um, these are all. If you have any questions, I'm outside um, collecting my stuff. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Haluk. And uh, now have, we have uh, Peter Fatelnik, uh, Deputy Head of Unit uh, in Net Innovation, and he will give us some uh, information about uh, Phase 3. Now being being the last speaker of the last session of the last day is uh, the, gra the graveyard slot, as they say. Yeah? So I'm, I'm not sure if I will go and reinterpret what I have said yesterday about the third phase. So for those who, who have not been here, I would advise or suggest that, that you have a look at the presentation I made. But let me go over a number of, 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 of points which perhaps I should share with you. Uh, it's quite interesting. The more I find out about phase one projects and what they have been doing, not what they planned, but what they actually have been doing, the more I'm, I'm kind of happy to see that these investments were, were seem to be quite useful. The more I see phase two projects preparing their plans and notably what they intend to do to open up the work and, and how would they would involve third parties, this is, I think, a, fully in line with the spirit we were promoting in this future internet PPP. I also sort of see or look at this future internet PPP from another perspective. You, you might know that this, this current PPP we talk here serves as a blueprint for any future PPP on the horizon 2020. Uh, the Commission has proposed public-private partnerships as a formal instrument on the horizon 2020 and their use there appears to be then more frequent, simply. They will be available as an instrument. They will come with the sort of all the bells and whistles which uh, complex, instruments, complex instrument needs. And this will be modeled very much on the activity we are kind of pathfinding here right now. So I think the work all of the people in the PPP do is not only to sort of satisfy their own interest or the interest of their community and companies, but it's also to satisfy interests which can go much beyond that. And I think you, people should also be proud of that. I think you you, you, and, and you have been part of an endeavor which no one else did before. And that is quite important, not only to, to like the commission, usually we always demand more and more. It's also time to say thank you sometimes. Um, the, let me go through my notes with that. I think here, yeah, what we would like to see, and, and here I'm talking not necessarily as someone working for the Commission, rather someone, you know, if you're an, a, a, an investor in an activity, a risk investor, where we're not necessarily looking for financial return, but a return more in, in terms of socioeconomic benefits for Europe, we are very interested that all the work is opening up. It is, this is clearly the way forward in this area of of technology, this is the way forward. We see these fast-moving applications and services being developed. And, and what I have seen so far, and this is also the, the big issue for the third phase, is how can you construct something which is then serving the purpose of those who drive the strategy, which is more narrow, but at the same time providing this openness that for left and right people can come and join. Now, when we look for the third phase, we clearly look at this stage for people who have a a good understanding of these issues. People who have either done that work before or are doing that within a national context, within a regional context, or within the company. People who know who 
how to deal with complex communities, with questions which are not easy to answer, and try to find a, a European or a number of those actors throughout Europe with which we can work to construct more in detail this third phase. Over lunch, I had a number of questions on how, how will you deal with this, or how you will, you, will you deal with that, like what contracts will these SMEs have to sign. Now, there are a number of uncertainties which are still not fully shaking out at this stage, but I would be happy to talk to anyone who has ideas there, who says, you know, I, I, I know how to do that. And then I think as the Commission, we would be willing to listen and try to see what can be taken up and made more broad in the concept of the, of the third phase. And uh, c coming to the end, as I said before, I think it's also time for me to say thank you. It was very good that uh, I could participate here. I enjoyed it very much. I'm really looking forward to sort of implement not only the second phase, which is the imminent goal, but also then the third phase. I would like to announce at the very end that we plan to hold, we call it roadshows, but we plan to hold events in, in every member state and wherever people ask us to come and go to talk about the third phase, to explain what it is, and to attract these new communities. So if you're interested to know more about that, you can either sign up on the, on the PPP portal website, where we will host it on the calendar all those events throughout all the member states, or you just get in touch with somebody from the commission or people here generally, those, those who, who are kind of more intimately involved in the PPP know as well. So this would definitely be an opportunity. If you're interested in such opportunities, please let us know. And again, many thanks. Great to be here. Thank you, Thank you Peter. Now time for questions. Any questions in the audience? Okay. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to the speakers. Thank you to the audience. I think it was quite an intense agenda, but I also think it was worth it to be here. Uh, I, I hope you, you all have a safe trip uh, back home. And, um, and yeah, let's keep in touch. Thank you. Also, for your information, all this has been recorded and streamed, so you will find soon all the information on the, web, uh, on the FIPPB website. Thank you. Okay. See you next time.